today we're just going to take a little whistle stop tour through a killer and show you the kind of uh, features and functions that the system has. It's a modern on demand web based accounting solution. Now, the first thing we do to actually access the system is actually log in. So we just click on a button from our website, enter our company and user information, and uh, we're in there. There's no need for any additional software or functionality, it's directly accessible over the internet. The home screen that you land upon provides the sort of uh, core information that you need on a day-to-day -day basis. So here you can group together mm -hmm. gadgets such as Google gadgets and internet feeds such as this market uh, update from Reuters, etc. that provides real-time information about what's going on within the system. In addition, we've got a, a number of uh, a killer gadgets. For example, down here we have a smart KPIs gadget which provides bank balance, a current liquidity ratio and a 30-day payment profile. The information is traffic lit, so it draws your attention to the things which, which demand uh, attention and work. Over here we've got a smart task queue. Again, it's traffic lit to show you the information that's currently outstanding in terms of, of work to list. So for example, like releasing timesheets or approving timesheets uh, prior to month end. Up here we have smart events, which are date driven activities which uh, are driven by a calendar within the system where you can define your business calendar uh, for things like reporting packs, meeting deadlines, and also submissions to HMRC. These things can be calendarized to either trigger uh, changes in data, run reports, or trigger alerts to individual users within the system, etc. The system is document driven. And within the templated version of uh, Akila, we provide a range of uh, regular uh, and commonly used um, uh, documents which are used uh, to actually process information into the system. So if we look at a couple of these, for example, first of all, the sales invoice. Um, very, very straightforward, straightforward presentation of information. In this case, we're using product information from a product list uh, where we're identifying the customer, um, information relating to the date, etc. We can do things like memorize and copy um, pro formas of documents so repetitive information can be recalled and used on a regular basis. Um, entering information onto a, a document is very straightforward. If you don't know the code, use the smart search facility, for example, to either search on the code, or in this case, we can search on the description by typing in a string and instantly it goes off to the database, picks up the information I'm interested in and uh, typing the quantity, lo and behold, updates the information. It's as simple as that. Let's look at another couple of documents. Um, if we look at, at a, um, one, say for example, for an expense claim, we can uh, pick up an expense and look at that. Given um, the uh, straightforward nature of the presentation, anybody could use this. Obviously, there are not user IDs presented here, etc. Again, you've got the ability to do sort of memorization of expenses. If you have regular ones, you can include things like uh, scanned receipt information. You can include comments. So, for example, clicking on a given uh, expense element, you can just type in some free format text, and that's recorded along with it, etc. And the system will automatically, if you um, enter a, a new expense line on a receipt, uh, do things uh, to help you along the way. So, for example, it knows if, uh, given the expense type that you actually enter, whether it's vatable, non-vatable, etc. So, if I just type in some uh, random text there and uh, put in the claim amount, it knows that entertainment is not actually um, uh, um, vatable. And again, uh, I can choose from a range of projects. So I'm costing it to a project at this point in time. If I don't know the projects, I can uh, bring up the smart search field here and uh, choose from a list very, very straightforwardly and away we go. So it's really, really intuitive and easy to use. Uh, another example would be, for example, timesheets. So if we look at a timesheet, we've got a, a weekly timesheet uh, uh, example set up here. Again, if I wanted to uh, um, add to this, I could, I could do so. This one's been released. If I look at this particular one uh, that's still active, I can add a new um, uh, item to it. So for example, if I type M, it brings up the M ones. If I type in then A, it'll highlight down to a, a, um, a, a tighter thing. If I, if I know that what I'm interested in is administration, jump to Friday, did one hour of administration on that project there. Hey presto, done, instantly, automatically updated. A more complex example um, that we've got on the system here might be, for example, a purchase invoice multi-currency. Again, this is more structured around um, a supplier thing. So we've got things like supplier information, we've got currency here, and it's full multi-currency. 
in which case it can actually deal with a period rate, a transaction rate or whatever. And in this example, we're structuring around the, the flexibility of um, product and non-product items. So we can either enter a product uh, description here or we can uh, free type text, express unit of measure and quantity, line level discounting, uh, line level VAT, and also cost each in individual line to a specific cost account within the information. Uh, inquiry on data within uh, a killer is really, really straightforward. If I just go do a quick in, uh, inquiry on a given thing, it'll remember the last account you looked at. Again, I never remember account codes, but I know I'm interested in this particular account. Just press uh, enter and instantaneously brings up two pages of uh, in, uh, information about this uh, given uh, account. On the fly, I can search and select on any basis. So for example, I could choose to search, uh, sorry, sort in transaction date sequence, in ascending sequence, in descending sequence, or in entry sequence. And this applies for all column uh, um, uh, inquiries in the system. So for example, I could do the same with description and so on. Um, cleverly, the system will allow me to uh, also uh, sort on uh, value. And it'll actually understand the accounting meaning of values and it'll actually pivot around the zero debit credit indicator. So it won't try and match that 10,281 debit next to the 10,281 credit there. Any stage I can drill into a view of an existing document or I can drill in to look at the, the information relating to that document. So here I'm going in and looking at a specific uh, uh, document. From there I can drill to the VAT account. So now looking at the VAT account. Uh, um, and that from there I can click on a given journal and move around the system effortlessly drilling into the information I need. At all stages I can also step back through the system using the, uh, the back button here. This little triangle here indicates there's an active uh, filter on this particular selection. So for example I can choose to uh, um, uh, fine tune it given the um, uh, predefined meanings of this quarter etc on period. Um, I could choose to include uh, things which aren't, uh, which aren't allocated. Um, also drill into specific um, analysis in terms of uh, you know, things like product group, department, cost center, etc. as defined within the system. And uh, just clicking on that will automatically go off and reduce the view of the data that I've got presented there. So the system is really, really straightforward to, um, to uh, inquire. If I just go back to that initial um, inquiry of Microstone, so um, I'm now looking at uh, Microstone's information for this quarter and allocated yes. And uh, I can at any stage output to a high quality PDF. I can output to a CSV file or I can output to a, uh, a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. And it'll actually uh, maintain the formatting of the numerical data in terms of debits and credits in that inquiry. Other inquiries that you'd expect within the system, you can view any document at any time. Uh, you can go and do detailed VAT information, etc. Or you can look at uh, the view of the system uh, across the board. So, for example, a ledger inquiry, I can look at um, uh, this period's information. That's fine. Click on that. Bang. The system will go off and it's come back with 70, seven pages, in this case, of information. The system will automatically populate or not populate columns within the inquiry based on there being data present, for example. So, for example, if I'm interested in a specific description within uh, a thing, that's interesting. I'm interested in a credit card payment. I'm going to click on that transaction reference. Boom. I'm in there looking at uh, um, the information that it relates to. And as you can see, it's lunch with a client that was uh, posted to that particular credit card. So lots of uh, choice and options in terms of inquiring. Reports are also really, really straightforward. Um, for example, um, if I look through a trial balance for, uh, in this case, June 09, I can choose different report profiles to actually uh, select different columnar information on here. And because we're looking at a combined ledger model, we can actually uh, see a combined view of the balance sheet and profit and loss and, uh, and actually just scroll down and collapse if we want to information to look at, informa uh, look at the information we're interested in. So for example, if I'm interested to see what's going on with our, our um, creditors in the period, um, hang on a second, what's that going on in there? Uh, there's a £220.50 debit on uh, green vase. What's that relating to? Well, I can drill from a report straight through to an account inquiry. Ah, oh, it's flowers in reception. Excellent. Okay, that, I'm happy with that. That's not a problem. 
Um, so finding information within the system is really, really straightforward, both from an inquiry and a reporting perspective. Again, I've got the opportunity to output to a PDF or, C or Excel spreadsheet at any stage. If we look at uh, another example of where that might come into play, for example, if we look at a balance sheet, um, we can choose, again, a range of formats, uh, including looking at budget information uh, for the period we were interested in. Uh, again, we have the ability to um, expand and collapse information uh, on, a, on a given basis and break out, even in with the balance sheet, down to individual um, uh, creditor or in the case of assets, obviously down to individual debtor information. So for example, I can look at the period movement for a given uh, customer from the balance sheet and it will show me what those, uh, those items are related to and I can then drill through to the particular um, uh, transaction reference and look at it in detail and it's inheriting the period information as you can see there. Obviously some reports are structured slightly differently so for example an aged analysis and uh, report which you can do for both creditors and debtors uh, is uh, structured around a uh, a calendar segmented time, in this case a 30 day uh, process. So for instantaneously we're able to look at uh, uh, an age depth, all of our active, uh, active things and we can drill in from there into an individual um, uh, account to find out actually what's going on within that particular uh, piece of business. All the information you see in here is maintained through really easy to use reference information. So for example, setting up the um, product list uh, is really straightforward. As you can see, 27 pages of products brought back instantaneously. That's the power of a hosted database. If, uh, again, we want to search for something, we use that example I did before of CAB. I can use this little search box back here, bring it up, and it'll pull back those items I'm interested in. From there, I can go in and actually enter uh, amend information on a specific thing at the drop of a button. It's very, very straightforward. It also includes things like personnel, projects and suppliers, mm -hmm. customers, etc plus also things like your general ledger codes, uh, which are, uh, are supplied as a template system, uh, as standard. Within accounting, obviously, there's some very, very straightforward processes you go through. Um, uh, things such as, for example, uh, transaction matching on an account. If you're um, uh, paying um, uh, um, suppliers using the payments uh, system, and obviously then going for and generating remittances or transferring to banks, etc transactions are automatically allocated, which saves an awful lot of time. Um, in the case of debtors, obviously, where you're receiving uh, payments against invoices, you have the opportunity to use the transaction matching system, whereby the system will, on this side of the screen, list all the um, outstanding invoices, and on this side, list payments which are received by them. And where it can, it will actually um, uh, provide a proposed match against a thing, which enables you to just at the click of a button automatically allocate uh, items where there is a, a good match of a, of a payment against an invoice. Um, you can also do things like split um, payments and invoices uh, where there is uh, where an item is, is applied to a number of items in one go, etc. A similar thing obviously operates uh, across the system. Um, so for example, if you look at automatic bank reconciliation, not only can you download from your bank a standard list of, of transactions, you can then go into the system, in this case looking at the current account, and the system will on one side list the transactions which exist within a killer, and on this side of the screen list the, uh, the bank transactions which relate to it. And once again, where there is a match based on, on the criteria, it'll put this proposed match in there. So to click on matches, it will automatically do your bank reconciliation, saving you huge amounts of time and process. Paying people and, and debiting customers is provided uh, uh, at, a, at a very straightforward basis. Payments, for example, is just a decision-making process. Who do you want to pay? What do you want to pay? When do you want to pay? And on what sort of cash flow uh, uh, basis you want to do with that. Um, you can obviously just take what the system's um, uh, suggesting or you can drill in to a particular account and then choose, for example, to withhold a particular item. If you um, withhold a particular item, it'll, enable, it'll obviously uh, denude the amount due to that particular account uh, with the respective amount. So the system is very straightforward to use. Uh, you create information and, and put it into the system using documents. Um, these are turned into accounting um, postings under journals. You can inquire and report in them 
within the system uh, on a touch of a button and uh, maintain information, add information on a really, really straightforward basis using the reference field. Obviously, the system is governed by uh, the configuration, which is uh, obviously not used on a day-to-day -day basis. But then here is things like where you set up your periods, where you set up permissions and workflows, and also uh, things like, for example, if you want specific account analysis for categorization of your general ledger, you can do that here, etc. Or if you want to create a whole new document uh, that actually meets the needs of your business, this is where you can do it. Okay, so that's a whistle-stop tour of a killer. I hope you found it of interest and uh, if you've got any questions, please contact us at info at or visit our website at www.akilla.com. Thank you.